Uh, the CHIPS Act got to be signed in today, although NVIDIA came out yesterday and warned, and that stock got crushed. Kind of an odd dichotomy there. What's your take on chip stocks generally now? They were and have been one of the market favorites. For sure. Good morning, Brian. So the CHIPS Act is undoubtedly a, a positive for the semiconductor industry and for the U.S. as we onshore a lot of jobs, a lot of manufacturing. You were dependent on Taiwan right now for leading edge uh, semiconductors. So think about the most advanced semiconductors that are being produced are coming out of Taiwan and it's a single point of failure risk. So what are we doing? We're bringing back jobs. We're bringing back manufacturing onshore benefits companies such as Global Foundries and Intel and Micron. Micron on the tape this morning with a multi-billion dollar investment over the next five years. So that's a positive backdrop. But to your point, Brian, we're in a really interesting dynamic situation right now with NVIDIA negatively pre-announcing yesterday morning. And you have you have uh, semiconductor stocks that are exposed to the consumer that are in a really tough spot. NVIDIA's gaming business yeah. is down yeah. 50% sequentially. So uh, buyer beware in terms of where we're focused from a semiconductor standpoint. Although that, that appeared, you know, you had Take-Two kind of warning as well. And I bring up NVIDIA and Take-Two. Take-Two, a video game publisher. NVIDIA powers a lot of the games. They're both the gaming space. A lot of kids were home from school for a year and a half. There's no, no doubt that gaming grew. Now the kids are, are back in school. So I think you wonder if that's more of a... Is that more of sort of just a, a normal and should have been expected shift, Jared, or the signs of a greater slowing economy? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of both, Brian. To your point, for sure, we're, we're lapping all of the work from home beneficiaries. So for sure, we're now, you know, especially seasonally, we're out in the summer, we're no longer staying at home. And that's obviously impacting the video game complex as well. But don't underestimate the impact of the decline of cryptocurrency and what's been uh, underlying with respect to NVIDIA business trends. You use a lot of GPUs, NVIDIA's main source of revenue, graphics processor units, to go ahead and mine cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum. And with the crypto winter that we've had over the last 12 months or so, mining has become less profitable. So what you've seen is a ton of cards, graphics cards, hit the secondary market. And that really does cause an imbalance from a supply demand perspective. So pricing came down, channel inventory came uh, subsequently increased, which had an unintended consequence from, uh, from an NVIDIA standpoint with respect to their gaming business. Yeah, otherwise, technology's had a great run, Jared. I mean, we know what happened at the beginning of the year. It's still the eighth worst start to a year ever for the S&P. I feel like such a downer, Kayla, saying that. The eighth, it's been such a nice run, but it is the eighth worst start to a year. But technology's popped. Do you buy into it? I mean, is there a real reason for this sudden turn or just another bear market rally in history's annals? No, I'm, I'm bullish, Brian. Uh, I mean, NASDAQ's wow. up 14. 14 to 15 percent from lows. I know it's it's rare to find someone who's who's positive these days, but Nasdaq's up 14 to 15 percent from lows. Semis have led us higher, up 25 percent. I'm probably a little bit more cautious there. Software is up 17 percent from lows, but to your, and that's where I think there's the greatest opportunity. To your point, look at the resiliency of a lot of these earnings prints. Last week we had high flyers such as Cloudflare. HubSpot, Atlassian in software land really deliver much better than expected earnings. Microsoft, Azure, Amazon, AWS, the cloud computing platform uh, of both companies really surpassed expectations with AWS still growing in the 30s, Azure still growing in the mid 40% year on year despite that scale, Google still growing 13% plus and gaining share. Uh, you know, these are these are really incredible results in the construct in the context of, of macro that everyone thinks is falling apart. And then I can't emphasize enough in terms of positioning being so one-sided. We're talking about five-year lows of relative underweight positioning in tech. So everyone who rotated out to play for the energy super cycle now needs to come back in. And there's only four or five months left in the year. So you're seeing that FOMO rally really take hold.